Hello and welcome back, dear esteemed guests and subscribers. This is none other than your crypto investigator, Lightlager here, and today I will be doing a preliminary investigation on BitCloud, which obviously already has been covered, researched, investigated, and talked about by the majority of crypto media and content creators. So I didn't have to do a lot of groundwork this time since I can just cite other people's research, but I will be adding a couple of talking points which haven't really been talked about regarding BitCloud's uh, legitimacy. So to give you a very short rundown what BitCloud basically is, it is trying to become like the next Twitter on blockchain. And they have this system where every user basically has their own creator coins, uh, which are bought and sold in an AMM model, automated market maker, so like Panker and Uniswap. So when the token is bought, the price goes up. When it's sold, the price goes down, basically. And people have the ability to basically claim their own accounts from Twitter, such as Elon Musk. And he only has to basically tweet out his public key and then he can basically claim his account on the platform. And he will be basically getting portion of these proceedings of his own coins, which are in circulation right now. And they're priced at $87,000 by coin. And there's 434 coins as of right now. So basically the market cap is already at 38 million. And basically that's where the speculation comes from, from these, you know, uh, creator based tokens, whatever they're going to have any utility or not is really up to the actual content creator. So that is basically the concept here. And there has been a lot of drama about this whole thing. And we're going to be actually touching upon a lot of those things. Now, the best place is probably uh, to start from the actual one page here. So this is not actually a full white paper. It's only seven pages. I've said in the past, if you're going to be doing white paper, better be like 20 pages. So what are some of the issues here um, regarding this project? Now, first of all, the code is not open source. There has been some type of a mentions about architecture being similar to Bitcoin. So could this be perhaps, uh, uh, you know, fork out of Bitcoin Cash, which is another project that basically supports, uh, you know, creator tokens. Is there a smart contract capability for these tokens? We don't really know anything about it. Is it going to be a mineable or a proof of stake? Nobody knows really. There has been an actual pre-mine, which they tried to hide a bit. There was a bit of a backslash about that. And um, also there is an explorer right now, but not really much is like given out here. Is this like vaporware? Is there an actual blockchain in existence? Or is this some type of a fake explorer? Like this goes into beyond my technical understandings. I don't really exactly know like how hard it would be uh, to create like, um, you know, a, a real... Uh, explorer and how accurate that would be. So I, I can't really verify that myself. Somebody else have to look into it. Now there has been no documentation to my understanding also about how can you set up your own node, which would support that theory that maybe this whole explorer thing is total vaporware and there is no actual blockchain here. Now I will not go too much into the actual one page or it just kind of goes into claiming your Twitter profiles and how does everything basically work? And, you know, what are the utilities like sponsored posts, which seems to be kind of like one of the utilities of the token and a bit of the uh, inflation curve. Some people have said that they has no maximum supply. I don't know how true that actually is, but basically here is some like creator coin price and, you know, in circulation, basically how it works. So that's kind of like interesting model. I think people are perhaps putting too much um, emphasis on this social currency thing. I don't necessarily see the bigger value on it. I just don't see some random dude on Twitter with, I don't know, 50,000 followers. Are his tokens going to be valued? Absolutely anything. Do they really have any value, etc.? And they also talk about decentralization, but once again, uh, these nodes are not decentralized as of right now. So everything about the project is centralized as of right now, because in order to buy BitCloud, you have to deposit Bitcoin into the platform. 
Now, that is obviously problematic because you're not able to withdraw the Bitcoin from the platform. There's been already 160 million apparently put into the actual uh, wallet, which has been moved in a couple of places, which we're going to be talking about in a second. But this is a very worrying aspect that I'm not able to withdraw my money. I'm not able to trade BitCloud. It's not anywhere exchange listed. There has been also a mention of very high roster of investors, which includes, um, I think, the Winklevoss, uh, Coinbase. Now, have all those people basically confirmed their invest uh, investment um, is not, to my understanding, true. So there might be some fake names there. You have to understand that this team is pseudo anonymous. And there has been a theory is who is the founder. We're going to be getting into that in a second. But like a project that doesn't have a minimal viable product, MVP, uh, don't have a proper white paper. It's very sketchy to me that people would invest in stuff like that. Uh, apparently, there has been talk. They have been talks in private with some of these people. Now, there are, well, I mean, this has happened before. Some people are saying, oh, because the legitimate companies have invested in it, it must be legit. And I'm sure that projects like goddamn Substratum or other bullshit has gotten, you know, a major investments uh, behind them. I'm not sure about BitConnect, but there has been cases where uh, notable investors have invested in shit companies, which turn out to be absolute vaporware. And when you have a lot of money relying around like Coinbase or Chinese exchanges have, they can just throw up million there and there to a lot of these projects and, you know, hope that it will be going into the moon or 10x. So um, it doesn't necessarily tell you anything that there are crazy investors which are putting money to pretty much everything. So um, these are not exactly which I would call a reserved investors. Now, there is, um, let's get into a lot of the drama behind the other reportings by other people now. So there was a decrypt article. I think this was the first one. They were the first one to cover this. Could be wrong about it. And um, is it all a scam? Now, this is a good article, which goes into a bit of the background here. And where does the money has gone into? Talks about, well, this is not important to this. Um, so basically, um, there has been some of that BitCloud's address money has gone into Amber Group, which is Estonian registered exchange of sort or holding portion going into Coinbase, which could be something to do with the Coinbase dealings that they have. Uh, portion has been going into Kraken, and these would support that the entity is probably residing in America. And then there has been money going into Hydra Marketplace. Now, Hydra is a Russian-based darknet. It's basically the new Silicon... No, it's called Silicon Era. I always... Not Silicon Valley, not Silicon Era. I just always goddamn forget the name. But based, Silk Road. Silk Road. Yeah, not Silicon. So it's basically the new Silk Road. And it seems to be, like, very popular in Russia and Ukraine and Russian-speaking countries. And most of the things that are happening there, to my understanding, is illegal activity, like drug trading and things like that. And there was uh, money to send to these people on uh, this hydro marketplace, which have probably engaged into marketing uh, BitCloud. They talk about an uh, individual from Nigeria. Okay, um, that's even more sketchier. The Nigerian is involved in a, a Russian thing, but basically uh, Twitter bots or something else in biz or uh, other, you know, black, black hand money, basically maybe it's CEO or something like that. But that is a prob probably a, not a connection you'll like to have on your entity. I'm not like morally against like entities like Hydra. So I'm not going to be making any like a moral judgment here. But some people might do and people may not like that type of a connection that you might be uh, interacting with uh, illegal entities. So that's a one thing you should be uh, kind of worried about right now here. And there's obviously we talked about big investors coming in and big names are already behind it. Um, but let's uh, move into our another article. So there has been uh, cease and desist uh, lawsuits sent by uh, Coindesk. And by the way, Coindesk's owning company is one of the investors. So has Coindesk intentionally done a lot of articles about BitCloud? Uh, even though that they are negative, some people say there's no such thing as bad press. Um, who knows it, you know, up to anybody's, you know, you know, decision. Now, the problem here is that 
you know, you're kind of like having these profiles here. As we as we discussed, we had the Elon's profile. We have Chamath, which, by the way, um, in Twitter, when you go actually search his verifying message, there is none. So this could mean two things. He hasn't done the normal verification via Twitter or he has done it privately or uh, thirdly, he actually has done it that then immediately deleted that tweet. So, and also there can be cases where some people have allegedly joined the platform that they really haven't. So when there's these verified marks, you may be a bit dubious, is this actually real? Tyler is definitely here on the platform because here on the Twitter, it says that he has done the BitCloud verification on his Twitter address. So he is definitely there as a person unless his account was hacked, which I don't believe is true. So there's a problem in here, which one of the dimensions that has been discussed is that you're not, a, it is against the law or to actually have these Ariana Grande's and Kate Perry's on the platform without their consent. And you're trading something between their name, which that they haven't really given uh, their rights to. So are you legally allowed to create um, you, you know, like a currency under somebody's name. This is a very uh, sketchy legal territory. Now, the other aspect, which is less talked about, is also that there is a form of defamation. Now, somebody can just keep dumping the Justin Bieber's money, and that can be perceived as a damaging to his brand if that coin is going to be going down, down, and down. So there are certain incentives to basically manipulate these um, values for each coin uh, for a certain influencer. So there are a bit of concerns regarding that because of that. So that's also another uh, problem here, which is, you know, in that legal, legal realm of, you know, problems you should be concerned about. Um, and you're going back to it. So there has been a couple of individuals um, who have done, you know, basically lawsuits and this person which they believe is behind this al -Maji. and he was a person who ran another crypto project and this is an alleged information we don't know if al naji is a person who is running this project to my understanding he is residing in america and if he is indeed residing in america those prior uh you know, transfers from the Bitcoin address would, you know, further support that theory. Then again, there's a lot of people in America. It could have been pretty much anyone. And the problem is that, um, yeah, there's another article going into this, uh, but this is not actually what I was looking for. It's the other one. So um, Al-Naji uh, run another project called the Basis Stablecoin, which got problems with SEC. And basically, they had to return all the money from their project. And so that's a one failure that they did. Now, what was the... Uh, did Najer al -Naji, uh, he did he follow the law of United States properly when he was conducting that ICO and everything to the book? Or did he did a lot of shady dealings, which was the reason why SEC basically banned them? So that is a very key caveat here, because if a person has you know, done crime before, there's a, a lot higher chance that he will do crime again. People just don't change like that and go legit. This is like not a thing. So, um, and then we have seen this in crypto space. Scammers tend to flock into another project from another and serial scammers are really a thing. They just jump into a new one after um, they got into problems. So al -Naji, um, you know, allegedly has been tied into BitCloud. So you have a person who has not necessarily holding the highest reputation in the space has and was part of the CEO of running that project, which basically failed. Now, that's kind of what we have been basically finding out regarding this project. So we got this weird legal thing going on here. You have CEO, which is LARPing as pseudonymous, but it's actually not. And that is why there's been people sending uh, those lawsuits. Maybe that leaked out from the investors who... Uh, met him, you know, in a call or something. So there are a lot of these issues, not legal issues, but there's those tokenomics issues because we don't know much about the tokenomics. And you obviously, Bitcoin is locked up here. You can't withdraw it. You have all of these big partnerships, but nobody has listed your coin yet, which is also a very 
uh, weird thing you would have expected that would happen very shortly, especially when you have Huobi invested. Huobi could have just listed your coin like that and it would be on their exchange. Now, let's talk about one thing that nobody seems to have talked about yet regarding BitCloud. There's nothing proprietary about it. You know, like anybody can clone this project and publish it on Polkadot or uh, Cardano or um, Elrond or Solana or any high-speed blockchain that basically supports um, token creation and, uh, you know, has already blockchain and, you know, team behind it, which are respected and established. There's nothing stopping that from happening. Like BitCloud has only the money behind it and that's it. Anybody can create a new project based on this model, same idea, just better tokenomics and no, no pre-mine and behind a blockchain where you can also actually withdraw and trade it immediately. And that can be done very, very simple. Look at this site. I mean, it's very clean. It doesn't seem to lack too much, but this is very easy to copy. This is not exactly what we are called proprietary technology or layout or logo. Yeah, I got a bit of a momentum going on because of the people talking about it. But as I said, there is nothing proprietary about it. So I see it as a very dangerous investment because anybody can come in and copy your model and people are more likely going to be investing in a team that is transparent, has a great track record and a blockchain, which also has been established already. So you have all the upsides of creating a clone out of this and really none of the downsides of interacting with a new blockchain, which who knows how efficient, how fast the TPS, how decentralized it is. There's so many questions to be had about BitCloud that they're just dangerous. And obviously, I think it also costs to post, you know, I have to buy BitCloud in order to post on the platform. So <laughs> I don't know what to tell you guys, but uh, my title here is for the time being Snow Tiger. Let's see if I actually get banned after uh, publishing this post and talking about this. But I mean, I'm still, you know, open to the idea that they may be able to overcome all of these problems. But it's going to be a very big hurdle. And meanwhile, they are in that legal jungle. Anybody can come in and steal that idea and publish a better product out of the existing BitCloud. So that's where the danger is. And that's why I wouldn't invest in this project as of right now. That's pretty much my two cents about it. Thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe and like. Leave your comment section below. Uh, comments in the section below. And I will probably do a, some type of a follow-up video, whatever it's a review of their platform or something else between the lines, if they're just still going to be around in two weeks. Thanks for watching. I will be seeing you guys next time.